What's going on, fam? So generally, usually, we, uh, you know, I, I do my little spiel, and then the uh, whole Brennan Myers intro comes in, and I go, I'm not even gonna jump into any of that. Actually, what I do wanna do is first show you kind of a physique update. So this is after eating and everything. Yeah, this is where I'm at. So I compete in, what is it? 60 days. 60 days officially, it's October 5th. Even the, even the legs are coming in nice, real nice. Feeling, honestly, like the, the best I've ever felt. So I've been working a lot on my upper chest and we're gonna get into the video in just a second, but I just wanted to give you this update. We're working on my upper chest a lot and also my shoulders to make sure that they're really well-rounded. I don't have that 3D look, I don't think as, as some people do, but what I do have is a really, really nice taper down. And I think that's what, that's what separates me a little bit. And who knows? I mean, uh, when I started this prep, and I've been prepping for about 13, a little bit over 13 weeks now. I was boxing, right? So, so I was boxing, boom, boom. But uh, now, now I'm, now I'm like actually training. And I was never on this structured training system because of my herniations and my shoulder. And then just a couple days ago, I squatted three sets of eight, being at like 190 pounds now because I've been, I've lost a lot of, a lot of fat, a little bit of muscle. But I, I squatted three sets of eight at 315, guys. At the beginning of this prep, I could only squat 225 for like five. D do you understand the significance? And I didn't have any belt. I don't like to use sleeves. I don't like to use any of that shit. Like that's where I was. So it it's really motivating to me. And um, that leads me into this video. And that is really my philosophy. Where I put my focus and how I've strategized to not only get stronger during my prep, because that's, that's big. Like, most people, they get weaker and weaker during their prep or they kind of stay the same. They're like maintenance. Uh, but for me, I've really grown. I, I've built a lot of muscle, become more conditioned. Obviously, I'm doing a lot more cardio, but I, I'm evolving, I'm transforming. And I, and I want you to know what I do because it is unique. I'm not just a regular bodybuilder guy that goes into the gym, hits my sets and then leaves. Right, and I say that normal bodybuilding guy because that's what majority of, of normal bodybuilders do. I'm, I'm not talking elite level, I'm talking a completely different, like just, just the norm. You know, you go in, you get your three sets of eight to 12, and then you go to the next set, you rest, then you go to the next set, you rest, and you don't really look at the time, you don't look at any of this stuff. It's just, all right, I feel good, all right, let me hit the next set. And so what really makes my philosophy so unique and so different is one, my, my iWatch, my, my Apple Watch. I am always, always consistently looking at this watch and the rest and how long sets are take, taking me and then also what's the time in between those sets. Because here's the thing, a lot of, a lot of muscle development comes with uh, uh, actually the correlation of your metabolism. And so if your metabolism is kind of lacking in certain ways, or you're not really using your muscles efficiently as much as you can, or working them on the level that you truly can, then you're just not going to be getting as much work, right? When you, when you talk about building muscle, you're taking all these muscle fibers and they're being stimulated. The more they're stimulated, the more they're, they're being used, the more you're gonna grow, and that's that's the point of it, right? So when I step into the gym, and when I get into my training, I, I look at this watch all the time, and I say, all right, generally 90 seconds. I want 90 second rest. If I'm exhausted, and it's my last set, I'm gonna push it to two minutes, because hypertrophy, to build size, it's really anywhere from, I like to say about 75 seconds, to uh, to 120 seconds, so that's a minute and 15 seconds to two minutes, and so with that amount of time, I I, I never jump out of it, right? I, I never jump out of that zone. Even sometimes, minute and 30 goes by, and I'm just setting up, and then I'm going, so I'm within that two minute period of rest. It, it it's it's like works wonders. I'm telling you, does it not, Taylor? Yeah. So Taylor behind the camera, uh, actually, let me show you. Let me show you him really quick. So my man has uh, qualified for nationals. And so if you see, like he even looks incredible. He has a great shape to him. And he's adopted the, the supersets and then also the rest periods, right? Mm -hmm. So these are just some things to, to keep in mind for yourself. 
uh, because if you want to separate yourself from the rest, you got to do things that the best don't do. And so with that unique style that, that, I, that I really tap into, like I do not miss those rest periods. And also the volume of my training. The volume of my training is pretty crazy. It's not like too crazy where you're gonna go in and you're not gonna be able to walk out of the gym, you're like, oh shit. No, that's not what it's all about. The training in the gym is not about walking out and not being able to walk. That's actually not correct. That, that's not the way you develop yourself. And actually sometimes less is so much more. I'm telling you so much more. So every single Wednesday, one of the things that I do is I focus on either my upper chest or my shoulders or both. And through this, how much has my upper chest and my shoulders grown? The skyrocket. Yeah. And I'm telling you, like, I didn't have any muscle right here. You gotta remember, I, I tore my left shoulder in four different places. And so one of, the, one of the injuries was about separation of my AC joint and my bicep tendon and my labrum. So when you think about that, there was nothing here. There was nothing. But I developed it because of my, one, frequency, two, less is more tactic, which I don't do as much on Wednesdays. I don't do supersets. I focus in on just a couple exercises for one movement, and I have my rest periods, the same exact, maybe a little bit different, a little bit more increased, and then I keep moving forward. So what you've learned so far is my rest periods are on fucking point. I never miss out on those. 90 seconds. With that, I'm under the bar in 90 seconds ready to go. It's not, oh, minute and a half, now let me walk over, because it might take you another 15 seconds. Yes, it's still within the two minute window, but you wanna push yourself. You wanna get to that next level. Two is intensity. My intensity is extremely, extremely high. At the same time, my volume is extremely high. So that brings me to number three, volume being extremely high, but I also do less one to two times per week. That brings me to number four. Number five, I do supersets. And this is something that I, I really take a lot of pride in. I don't know if you guys have followed my Iron Body program, my Body Evo program, my Body Evo program, my Body Weight Only program. But in all of these systems, it's the same. It's supersets. And what makes my training so unique is sometimes it's only six repetitions for one movement and then six repetitions or eight repetitions for the second movement. So you are kind of in that hypertrophy zone if you're getting from one exercise to the next within a 10 second window, and that's key. So that's where, where my training kind of takes the next level. And what I've started to adapt is sometimes I'm going a little bit lower rep, around six reps or even five reps sometimes, more compound movements, keep all these things in mind. Maybe there's stuff flying on the, on the screen so you can remember this stuff, but I take a compound movement, that's generally the only time I'm hitting around five repetitions. And when I'm not doing a compound movement, let's say I'm isolating a little bit more, or uh, for instance, I'm doing some lateral raises or anything like that, I'm hitting anywhere from eight to 12 repetitions. So when I go from that compound movement to that other movement that's a little bit more isolation or whatever it may be, I'm already hitting the next level because some of those movements that I was working in that compound movement, for instance, a bench press, Let's say we're doing a bench press. And for me, today, I'm not going too heavy. I'm not going too light. I'm not going too heavy. And I'm not going to failure. So I'm able to do a little bit more sets, volume, with another movement, let's say, a lateral raise. And so with this, my shoulders are being worked. My middle delt is being worked in a bench press, but synergistically, meaning it's secondary. It's not the primary mover in the movement. The primary mover is my chest and then also my anterior delt. So those two work like crazy together, but my middle delt is still working. So because it's firing, I'm gonna go over and hit those lateral raises. If you understand the human body, if you understand a little bit, you don't need to know too much, biomechanics, a little bit of kinesiology, where muscles insert, the actions of each muscle, your training will get to the next level, I'm telling you. So the uniqueness of my training isn't, isn't the fact that I'm doing like crazy different movements than you. That's not what it is. It's the structure and the strategy. It's my philosophy. It's I'm not going to make any more breaks than I'm supposed to have. I'm not going to do more reps or less reps than I'm supposed to be doing. I'm not just gonna do two more exercises just so my legs, I feel all wobbly because it could attribute to overtraining. 
I take my rest. I haven't been injured the entire prep. I'm not gonna cross my fingers, I'm not gonna knock on wood or anything like that because I know I'm fucking good because I'm focused. I've suffered enough injuries in the past. I was doing crazy bodyweight training and respect to bodyweight training and calisthenics, I love it. And I incorporate a lot of those movements into my training and that's number six or point number seven. I don't even know what fucking point it is, but it's incorporating movements that require a lot of stabilization. That's key. So for instance, if I'm gonna be doing a bench press, maybe not the main set, maybe not the beginning of my training, but maybe in the middle of my training, I'm gonna take a one arm bench press or a one arm overhead press or a one arm row rather than a, a double, double row. So these are the type of things that I incorporate and it allows my core to be extremely, extremely strong. And the reason why it's so strong is the development over years. And that's another thing. Seven, consistency. Your consistency is going to bring you to the next level no matter what. No matter what. Even if you're consistently doing something wrong, it's still gonna level you up because of your mindset. And a lot of training, a lot of growth comes from the mindset. It's what are you telling yourself? If you don't really think you're gonna grow that much, let's say you're training the same way I'm training. You're eating the same way I'm eating. And your mindset is saying, I just don't know if I'm gonna grow as much. And my mindset's saying, I'm gonna get stronger and I am gonna grow like fucking crazy. You know where it's gonna make a difference? It's not so much about your mind being able to grow your muscles, right? I, I do believe in that to a certain extent, but it's my mindset takes me during those movements a little bit further. So imagine if I am creating more intensity by how explosive I am through these movements or the controlling mechanism, how much time under tension, how much longer I am going through these movements. You can be doing the same workout as I, but I am on that next level of intensity and that consistency creates development. And the development gives me progress. And then, boom, there you have it. You've transformed. So if you follow all of these things that I'm talking about, supersets, rest periods, focusing on, okay, for a compound movement, you wanna do a little bit more than three sets, especially on your intense days, your high volume days, four or five sets. Work with it, push yourself. And on that last set, as many reps as possible. Why the hell not? Take your training to the next level. Don't make excuses, don't say you have, you have so much work to do. Oh, I, I, I go to school all the time, I don't have time. Uh, I have a family of three people. Look, one of my very close friends owns a very big business, and he wakes up 3.30 in the morning to train and he's shredded to his bone. You've seen him, he's been in the place. And the reason why, the reason why he makes that happen is because it's important to him. And if your body getting down to 8% body fat, cause that's very, very fucking lean. If that's not important to you, do not worry about it. You don't have to train five, six times a week at all. Train three times a week. You'll be fine, completely fine. It's healthy for you, get a little cardio in. Last thing I wanna say, so a lot of guys think that when you're immense physique, all you need is up here, right? All you need is here. That's all you need. The truth is, the reason why my back can grow as much as it has and look as good as it does is because of my legs. It's because of my legs. You gotta understand, when you train your legs, growth hormone, testosterone, everything, everything, your hormones are freaking out because it's the most intense thing to, to your body. When you're squatting and when you're deadlifting and when you're hitting anything for that matter, anything leg related, especially more compound movements, your body is under stress from, from head to toe. So imagine your cross bridges, all your muscles firing, muscle fibers, what is stimulated? It's, it's insane. It's incredible for your body. So increase the intensity of your leg workouts and you will see the results better than you've ever seen them. And don't just do the same bullshit movements. I'm telling you, I do movements that are just exhausting that people don't like to do. Goblet squats. I do Bulgarian split squats. I hold the dumbbell. I do RDLs with, with dumbbells. You know, and I do higher reps, but I also superset them with a hack squat. And I'm doing all these movements that people don't wanna do, GHRs, glute ham rates. I mean, 
There's hyper, all these different movements that you don't wanna do, you should do them. Especially if you wanna build size and get to the body that you've always dreamed of or wanted, right? Okay, so that's my philosophy. And I hope you understand. Rest, volume, intensity, consistency, really holding yourself accountable, the dedication part of it, the food, everything. It matters. So don't cut yourself short, all right? So thanks for tuning in for another video. Uh, this is a Crate You fucking special, babe. Let's run, let's get it. <laughs> Anyways, uh, my, so I'm competing October 5th. Um, we're also going to the Olympia in September for a Crate You nutrition event. The greens juice selling like wildfire. Creatine HCL, it's about to be launched. So I'm super excited. Check out my Instagram. I'm probably posting about it already. Eh, probably not. Eh, I might be. Creatine HCL, we're developing our probiotic and prebiotic. That actually comes out here very, very soon. We're developing a pre-workout that I really don't want to tell you too much about because I know other guys, other girls that are watching this, they're going to go and try and do it as quickly as possible. It's something extremely, extremely next level. And also a stress product. I'm working on a stress product, something that is just incredible, high quality. Everything that's that really is create you related, I'm, I'm part of the formula. The pre-workout, I literally have developed the, the formula so far. Um, and then with the stress product, I've literally developed the formula. I look at other formulas, I look at specific ingredients, I look behind the scenes, okay, what does this do? What is the research? Is this bad? What are the side effects? How have people reacted? Do they like this? Do you like this? How much is too much? When coupled with this, how does it react? I speak with the formulators, I speak with the doctors, I speak with the nutritionists, I speak with everybody. And then, boom, we have our product. That's why our Create You Greens are freaking next level. I'm not kidding. Every, every single person, I can go on my phone right now and I can show you the reviews. Everyone's tagging it because it's freaking amazing. We're building a lifelong brand, something that you can be a part of. So go into the description, go click on the Create You and get your greens. Get your greens. Why, why the hell not? Anyways, thanks for tuning in. Every Tuesday and Friday, new podcast. Also, follow me on Instagram. I'm always posting shit. I'm talking about my girlfriend. Where's my girlfriend at? Out right here. Yeah, this is my girlfriend. Um, I got Daniel, I fucking got Daniel repping. I got Rico, Enrico the Rhino over there, freaking vibes, baby. You know what I'm saying? Um, I, got, I got Taylor, accidentally put it on 120p slow-mo. Look at it, you see the top right? 120p, yeah. Um, and, and fucking life's great, man. Life's great, create you. <sighs> Thanks for tuning in for another video. video, video. See you next time. Peace!